Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming along. Everyone's still awake on Monday afternoon, it looks like. Or I've just woken some of you up. These guys have got the right idea down here. So as, you, as you've seen here, uh, my name's Matt Orford. I'm a platform specialist at Parallo, which is a company based out of New Zealand. Uh, you might be able to tell from the accent I'm from Australia. Uh, 2017 V Expert, you can grab me on Twitter, at Matt Orford, and I blog at virtualtazzy.com as well. So before I get into it, uh, the reason I put this talk together was because I quite often talk to you know, customers or uh, some guys at uh, VBs or meetups and stuff who, you know, they might be uh, VMware administrators or they might be part-time, you know, doing Windows, VMware, quite a few things. And there's some free tools that they just have no idea about uh, that you talk to them about and it blows their mind. So uh, hopefully someone picks up at least one new thing here and I'll be happy. And there's our uh, friend, the disclaimer. First one's RV tool. So this one's a pretty popular one. Um, so it's a .NET application and you connect to ESXi host or a vCenter environment and it retrieves a huge amount of information from the environment and pulls that into tabs in a GUI. Uh, so in the tabs there you can see it pulls out you know, snapshots, it pulls out host information, VM information, storage, everything about your environment's pretty much pulled out there. So from the UI you can export it out into a file. Um, you can also schedule RV tools uh, from the command line, rvtools.exe. So uh, what we do for most of our customers is actually schedule RV tools and get it to send us an email. Um, and that way we've got like a quick snapshot of the environment, you know, every morning at that point in time so we can see what's going on if we need to refer back to something. Second one is vCheck. And uh, this one was started by Alan Renouf, who now works at VMware, of course and it's a PowerShell framework that's being developed by the community now. So it's on GitHub, you can go and, if you've got coding experience, you can go and uh, add some plugins or make some changes to it. So the idea of vCheck is that it uses a huge, uh, a huge amount of plugins to go and check against your vSphere environment to see if you've got any issues. So if you've got any long running snapshots, uh, if you've got any host alarms going on in your environment, if you've had people connected to vCenter for ages, you know, people adding remote, or removing machines, there's heaps of plugins there to go and check out. So the idea of vCheck is to uh, go ahead and schedule it and then get it to send you an email. So when you come into work of a morning, you can open up your vCheck for your environment or you know, for your customers and you can go through and see if there's anything that you need to be you know, having a look at pretty quickly. So for me, the idea of vCheck is to get it to email you a blank report. That would be the perfect world. Um, I don't think I've ever got there yet. So. Third one's the VMware Support Assistant. And if you've got vCenter Server, you should probably grab this guy as well. So it's a VMware tool. Uh, it's, you download an OVA, uh, so it's deployed as an appliance in your environment. And there's two sides to Support Assistant. There's proactive and reactive. So the proactive side of Support Assistant uh, goes through your environment and scans you know, your host, your logs, your vCenter servers. And it uploads that data to VMware, optionally, I believe. Um, and you can filter out some things, uh, obfuscate such as IP addresses, MAC addresses, uh, maybe a couple of other things as well. And the idea is that VMware's crunching all this data in the back end and you know, they'll pick up on any issues that there might be there in your environment and they can let you know about that in a monthly report email or by triggering uh, some vCenter alarms for you. So the other side of it is the reactive side and I actually quite like the reactive side of it. It's very simple. All it is is a, is a portal login to my VMware. So instead of going to myvmware.com to log a support case, you log into vCenter, go to the support assistant plugin, and it's just, a, it's just a portal to my VMware. But when you get to the end of logging your support case, you get the option to upload logs. So it'll give you a hierarchical view of your vSphere environment, you know, vCenter servers, hosts. So you can tick the ones that are relevant to the case that you just logged. And as a background task, it will generate those logs and upload them to VMware. So you don't have to go and grab those manually and then FTP them up and something like that. So it's a pretty small appliance. And it, yeah, if you've got vCenter server, grab that one as well. Next one is PowerCLI, and that might be an odd one to have here, but it's such a huge tool to have in the tool set these days uh, that I didn't want to skip over it. So for those that don't know, uh, PowerCLI is essentially a, a framework of modules for the VMware products and it's based on the, or it's built on the Microsoft PowerShell framework. Um, so and the nice thing is if you know PowerShell, you know PowerCLI. So the guys that I talk to that are traditionally Windows admins and they're doing a lot in the Windows space, um, 
sometimes it's easier for them to bounce across and do some tasks in the vSphere space by using PowerShell because they're pretty familiar with the framework, how to use the commandlets, how to get results, how to do something with it and that kind of thing. Uh, so it extra, usually abstracts the API into the easy to use commandlets, that's the idea of PowerShell. And like I said, I consider this to be one of the most important tools to have in the toolbox. vCenter Converter. It isn't used a lot these days, you know, compared to a few years ago, um, but it's still got some interesting use cases. Um, the main one was usually to do a physical to virtual uh, conversion or migration, or a P to V. So if you've got a physical box sitting there and you want to get it into a VM, you can go and throw out uh, vCenter Converter and it will, it will pull that uh, machine into a virtual machine for you. Um, there's some other free tools that will do something similar as well, but this is quite easy to use and it works on a wide range of operating systems as well. So check out the compatibility for the version that you're downloading. Uh, it can also be used for some V to V migrations as well. So there's some interesting use cases where, you know, where I used to work, we came across a, a corner case where a faculty had like a ESX maybe 2.5 or 3 before my time. Uh, they had a couple of VMs still on it, we needed to get them off. Uh, we're having trouble exporting it, so we just did uh, V2V to, to get them into the main central repository. So uh, there's some yeah, interesting use cases for that as well. ESX Top. ESX Top is uh, it's essentially uh, Linux Top, and it's uh, called uh, on an ESXi host, and it's used to analyze uh, real-time performance data on an ESXi host and it's quite a powerful tool. Uh, it does have a pretty steep learning curve if you haven't seen or used it before, uh, but the amount of information that you can pull out of here is phenomenal, and once you get to learn it, and you make this one of your first point of calls in troubleshooting, uh, it can really narrow down where you need to get to, and you can get there really quickly. Um, it does have the option to create a config file, so if you don't want to be monitoring everything or if you jump in there and you only want to see you know, uh, one or two stats about virtual machines that are running on a host, you can create a config file uh, that you can use in ESX Top and you can also uh, schedule and batch the output of ESX Top. So if you've got an issue that's occurring you know, randomly, maybe once every three or four or five hours in your environment but you can't capture it in ESX Top, uh, you can set it up to schedule and it'll output to CSV and then you can pull that into something like uh, Microsoft Performance Monitor and you can get your graphs and stuff in there. So if your issue happens again, uh, you've got the data there, export it out and you're not trying to sit there you know, and monitor the ESX top screen while, while an issue is occurring. And yes, it's a good idea to run it in normal operating uh, times as well. And you can actually get a baseline of your environment. So if you've got an issue in your environment and you're not quite sure what that metric actually looks like when things are working normally, if you, if you go ahead and grab a baseline every you know, three, six months in your environment, uh, you can go back and compare to that and say, okay, well, that metric's not normal, so we need to look into that one. There are some cheat sheets available as PDFs as well uh, that show some of the you know, top three or four uh, performance metrics of each major component as well. <clears throat> GitHub repositories. So I've only got a couple here. Um, there's the vGetto, which is uh, William Lamb's repository, and the main VMware one as well. So GitHub is uh, you know the main uh, platform that's being used to push code up and manage code. Um, Go and check out those two repositories to start with if you haven't looked at GitHub before. There's a heap of scripts just in those. And before you go and write your own script to do something, have a check on some GitHub repositories and no doubt there's someone out there who's done something similar or you know close to what you're trying to do that you can take and adjust. And GitHub for me ends up being like YouTube. You go to it and then you, you can see contributors to projects and you go to the contributors page and then suddenly you're bouncing around three or four hours later and you found all these repositories that you bookmarked and you've got all these uh, you know, great resources there at your hands for all these scripts that you just had no idea about. So, uh, Vesta. Vesta is a community project that's written in PowerShell. And the aim of Vesta is to help solve configuration drift within your vSphere environment. And it was initiated by Chris Wall, and I think it was at VMworld last year that he gave a talk on it and kind of got things kicked off. And it's championed by Brian Bunky now, um, and it's got a lot of input from others across the community as well. The way it works is that you define your environment configuration in a JSON file, and it can actually pull out you can, you can download Vesta and then run it against the environment and it will pull out the information as well. So you don't need to sit there and go and fill out a JSON file. And you can go and change your configuration if you want something to change as well. 
and Vesta then calls pester tests, uh, which run against the live environment and compare that against the configuration file. So in your configuration file, you might say, you know, for this cluster, DRS should be on. And then when you run Vesta to say, how's my environment looking, it'll flag and say, well, DRS is off in that cluster. So you now know that you've drifted from your desired configuration. And then if you run it with the dash remediate flag, it will go ahead and fix that for you and put the environment back in your desired state. So this has got a great, a great lot of use cases, you know, not only for production environments and, and saving configuration drift, but you know, for your home labs and stuff where you're mucking around a lot, but you want to get back to a, a normal desired state at the end of it, uh, or for work labs where you know, you've got a lot of people in there at a lot of times doing different things and you just want to reset it every night, you can go ahead and just run Vesta with the remediate flag and it will go ahead and change everything back to how you de desired it in that JSON file. Uh, so that's just a quick list of the resources there that we spoke about. Uh, if you use your Google foo, it'll probably come up first on most of them anyway. Um, and that's pretty much it. So thanks for coming along. Thanks to the sponsors and the guys down the back running this.